Is there visible terror on my face yes. when you do that? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. There is. <laughs> Welcome to the intro. I'm Josh Anderson. I'm Bob Galen. Bob. Yes. I feel like we should keep this one quick. So, Metacasters, we are going to pull the curtain back. Welcome to the Metacast. I'm Josh Anderson. I'm Bob Galen. Oh, out of a cannon, Bob Galen. Absolutely, man. Jeez. Shoot me, my powder's dry. I don't know what that means. I keep your powder dry. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that's how we're starting today. Yes, we are. That is that is uh that is the intro. Yeah. And we're rolling. Okay, so today's episode builds on top of our previous episode. Bob, do you remember? Are we connecting the dots? We are. We're connecting the dots. Um, we're connecting everything. All right. So our previous Whoa. episode, do you remember what it was? No. Oh. <laughs> really? Uh, did it? Was it? Is this the pickling thing? Yes. Pickle. Yeah, 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 Gherkins. Yeah. <laughs> Gherkin. 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 You can have a sweet gherkin. You can have a, a snappy gherkin. I'm yeah. I'm in like a snappy que- gherkin kind. Question. Of mood. Yes. Do you do you like pickles? Um. I like sweet pi- yeah I like sweet pickles. I don't like sour pickles. I don't like any pickles. You don't like any pickles? No. Have you ever had like a sweet pickle? Uh, the ones that are like they're sugary, they're they're sweet. They're usually smaller. I have not classified the pickles I've tried. Oh, there's all kinds of pickles. Yeah? You don't know that? I I I've accidentally eaten them on like a burger and said, "Ooh, don't so like that." So here's a question for you when you grew up. So there was a pickle barrel. Yeah. Uh, when I was growing up, or a pickle jar, and you would go into like a, a, a grocery store, like a mom and pop grocery store, and you just reached your whole hand in there. No, 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 they would do it for you. But, okay, but there was there was usually on the counter. Yeah, like they'd have penny candy. Do you re- you probably don't remember penny candy? <laughs> I'm I'm dating. I myself. remember like nickel, nickel candy, nickel bazooka bubble gum. So there was in the era of penny candy, mm-hmm. you know, and these like drug stores that had everything. They had an ice cream like counter. a Woolworths. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, they would have a big pickle jar. Yeah, with these big honking. I'm not, and I'm not yeah. exaggerating. Pickles, uh, like, and they were sour or whatever you want to call them. They were the traditional yeah. pickle. Yeah. I used to get, they were nasty. They were pretty, I mean, they were. <laughs> you were building this up they, like it was great. They, they were, were like, they no, were gross. No, 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 they were, no, they were, <laughs> they were gross. But, but all of the old folks back then loved those things, right? Yeah. It's like, like, it felt a like a, it felt like a nostalgic, I remember going to the Woolworths with. And grabbing a. With my three pennies I scrounged up off of the grabbing ground. grabbing a pickle that was bigger than pickle. me. Yeah. And, and then yeah. eating it on the walk home. Right. And it was wonderful. No. And it turned out to be, it was no. gross. It was, they were pretty gross. Okay. So. Enough of that. Enough of that. In the last episode, we we talked about the dangers of like everyday life if you aren't super vigilant about not becoming pickled by your surroundings. Well, you, you become, you lose your self-awareness mm-hmm. of what pickling is. It, you lose your awareness of what your environment or your ecosystem is doing to yeah. you. And it can happen to you without you even knowing. Right. So we talked about ways to be aware, to be vigilant, things you can do, questions to ask, all of that to make sure that you don't become one with the ecosystem and just kind of blend in. Right. And Bob and I feel like that's happened to us. It's happened to us? In the Medicaid? Yeah. Yeah. You think we become pickled? We do. We do. We've been doing basically the same thing. For a long time. For a long time. So could I could I say that you are the big honking gherkin and I'm the little sweet pickle? <laughs> <laughs> but, 
It's what's how pickled sure. you are. Yeah, sure. It's it's yeah. it's there's degrees of pickledness. Yeah. Right? Well, it, and so we we hit an inflection point. Ooh, did that hurt coming out? No, Bob. no, silky smooth. It was pretty smooth. <laughs> inflection point. But the one inflection point, the one major change that we made was driven externally. It was our listeners kept reaching oh, out the quality you and were- saying, "Hey, your audio quality." It's pretty bad. Like, we like the content, but it's getting hard for me to listen. Right. So can you can you spend a little money? And, I, I, rem- I remember that. And and do that. So we we had to, like, okay, like, are we serious about this? And we do did that we a couple this? times. We, right. We've never changed the format. We've changed the basic recipe mm-hmm. has been the same. Yeah. We upgraded our equipment several times, right? right? Uh, you got multiple mics. We mm-hmm. had different. We swapped out mics. You have another mic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and things like that, mixers, little yep. mixers and things. So we've done that. Uh, but we've never changed the format. Are you thinking, Do we? what do you think about changing the format? Uh, I don't think we changed the format. I think this is a yes and moment. You're like silky smooth. Oh, man, I tell you what. You know, yeah. This is an integrated, convolutionary <laughs> pivot point. In the ecosystem of the universe. Are you suggesting <laughs> that I am nothing more than like business buzzword bingo now? No. That it, listeners it, could have a sheet at home they could, could play be, along? It could be part of that product. You have been assimilated by the dark side. And the first person to get and you, you five may been, words across? You may have been pickled no. by, the, by the product side. Maybe. So. This <laughs> is. Pickled by product, a pickled product owner. My, my dear, dear listeners. <laughs> what? 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 I am trying to spark the empathy within them to, to understand so what's how, the yes how, how, how hard it is to keep you on track. It with is. The topic. It is. What's the yes and? I'm I'm coming back. I'm trying to circle back. Okay. So yes and what do so things that we have. To, so let's before we go there, Bob and I, we've been talking about trying to make changes. You you've seen us ask around for help, support, all these different things to to, to help us take it to that next level. We recognize that we've just been doing the same old thing for a decade plus. And we're a little disappointed with ourselves that we've allowed it to get here. Yep. So now it's, okay, let's do something different slash better slash we don't know. We spent some time a couple of weeks ago hashing through some ideas that kind of got fires going. Then after the last episode, we kind of realized that we're pickled. So then the concept of this episode is like, let's talk about what we think we could do or what we think we should do and have that strategic planning here live and open the kimono, as Bob would say. That's a classic Bobism. You beat me. That was right there in my brain. You know that? You (laughs) You were ready to say it. I was ready to say it. That is so, oh, man, we are absolutely pickled. Yeah, it's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, we're trying to be transparent with what we're doing. Let's just let's just dive in. So yeah. some of the things we're thinking about. Um, so we've we've thought about multimedia, right? So th- this is this is recorded vocal, uh, but we've talked about video. Yeah. So, so we've brainstormed around things, metacasters like uh, video accessibility that might imply a YouTube channel or something mm-hmm. like that, mm-hmm. or various increasing the channels. Uh, we have talked about not wanting to. And this is all open to feedback, so send us your feedback yeah. and your thoughts. Uh, but we thought about about continuing, so not retiring the Metacast, continuing it, yeah. Um, but augmenting it uh, with with a strong, like a video presence. We've talked about getting someone to edit content. Mm-hmm. One of the things um, I, I saw, some you send something out to a. I don't know, it was someone who on Twitter, you know, you thank them for going back to the old content. Yeah. Because it was like, you know, I see someone going back there and the sound, I apologize for the sound <laughs> yeah, quality yeah. in advance. Yeah. Uh, but there are quite a few people who go back and listen to all of our episodes. So we have an incredible amount of content. And we've talked about what do we do with that? Mm-hmm. Uh, can we uh, 
put it on we put it on different platforms but can we um texturize it can we uh cut it up mm-hmm. can we capture it in themes um can we do something can we monetize it uh, to be frank in some ways yeah. we've talked about you know there's the free content but if we have added value uh can we monetize <clears throat> and what would people pay for what yeah. would that extra value look like yeah yeah the 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 uh thing that that I've started to realize is we don't do a good job getting the word out. We, we, we just, we, we, we record, we laugh. I do some editing on the weekend. We hit publish and it goes live and that's it. And our, our reach is really driven by word of mouth. Somebody saying, Hey, I listened to this. You should listen to this. There's a, there's a lot of people that as they talk about top X, podcasts about agile were usually somewhere in that realm. Um, and so that helps us get out, but we are active participants in growing our listeners slash viewers. We and, are. and, and I think that's the change that we're ready to make. Well, it's that, I mean, so we talk about content, we talk mm-hmm. about reach, uh, yeah. which is what you're just saying. I think we suck at reach. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I think we have done a terrible job of is connecting, I don't know, there's probably a social media term for this, but we have a podcast, I do writing. Mm-hmm. So like cross-connecting things. You did Kazi, mm-hmm. right, for a while. You still mm-hmm. do. Uh, but we, so not only do we not broadcast the Metacast well, but we don't connect the dots in our on yeah. our multivariant, con, multivariant wow. uh, context. The buzzword bingo check. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> in, in our content. Uh, we haven't done that. Uh, you usually tweet about usually what you do is tweet. Yeah, that's I usually, kind of the top end, and then I sort of retweet it. Yeah, uh, and then I I'll every once in a while I'll put it on um, uh, LinkedIn or something like that. Uh, but it is word of mouth. The the thing that disappoints me in us mm-hmm. a little bit mm-hmm. is we get when we we get a lot of positive feedback from unique individuals. Yeah, right. I think of someone in the UK. There's a scrum master in the UK who has talked to us. So we have we have solid content. We've gotten ranked when anyone is actually listening to the stuff. We've gotten yeah. ranked on some really meaningful lists yeah. in a top ten, and and but we're not getting the word out. Yeah. So the, so va- I'm not ranking the content, but it's not chopped liver. Yeah. So we have valuable content, but it's not reaching the audience. Yeah. That it, that it should. Yeah. We 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 have validation that people like the words that are coming out of our mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Usually, maybe not all the time, which is fair. And so this is something that we've been talking about, like, hey, yeah, we should do more. We should do more. And clearly, if we were going to do more, we would have done it. So one of the key things that Bob and I realized is, okay, we have some more proof that we are incapable of making this happen by ourselves. So we need help. And that's where Bob sent some stuff out three ish months ago, maybe a little bit longer bit asking longer. for like volunteer help. Yep. And a we, few people responded. Yeah, yeah. And what, what we realized is that we actually need like a professional that can do this and, and has done it well, because you know what we have ideas, but we don't really know what we're doing to take this next level. So I, I think you and I, Disagree. Ooh, ah. I think we disagree, disagree yeah. a little bit on this. Okay, right. Um, it, it's not the financial. The financial is part of it, and mm-hmm. it's the professionalism. But I, I think someone. So you want to get a professional, right? Someone mm-hmm. who does editing and and is a wizard. I'm exaggerating. Yeah, is a wizard of web technologies and things like that, and pay them. And I get that. You mm-hmm. need that. But I also then look at us, mm-hmm. and I'm torn with, I want that plus, so maybe less of that or something, and someone who's willing to do it for free because they're passionate about mm-hmm. it, and they're passionate, because we do it for free, right? We've been doing mm-hmm. Metacast for free for 10 years. Mm-hmm. Why? Because we're passionate about it. We love right. what we do. Yeah. So do we need professional help? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> In multiple sure. ways. Yeah. I do. Um but I don't want I don't want to just get someone who is working with us for the paycheck. So that's what I worry about. I I would like someone who understands agile yeah. in some way yeah. and has some of the passion. Like they come work with us because they want to work with you and I. Yeah. 
right? <laughs> it's hard. It's yeah. hard. But they, they, they are, they like, they want to, they want to collaborate with us. Yeah, they, they, they have a passion for getting the word out, just like we do. They have a willingness. They care. They understand the content a little yeah, bit, right? I'm not looking, I, and I don't know if this is a, this may be a unicorn. So if I it believe is, believe it is. Yeah, see, that's yeah. unfortunate. Well, and so what? And the reason why I am thinking we need a professional, and then I'll explain why I agree with your disagreement, is that I have friends who are in the YouTube world that they have built a business around understanding the algorithms of YouTube and being able to drive viewers and subscriptions and all of that and, yeah. and how to create and market the content. And that, that is not straightforward stuff that we could do it ourselves. Likelihood of success is, it is lower. We might get to where we want to get to over a long haul. I, I believe paying an expert that knows how to get the content where it needs to be, how it needs to be there. That's what I think we need to pay for in talking to my friends. Yep. They said, Hey, there's, there's a ton of people that you can hire to go do that. But what you need is you need somebody that's passionate about the content that can pull the right pieces. So maybe that's right. what I'm yeah. saying. What I'm saying. So that's what I'm saying. I don't want yeah. just that exit. So if that person who understands us and is excited about agile mm -hmm. to some degree and mm -hmm. really excited about working with us and really excited and they match our vision, mm -hmm. right? Not, it's not about the money, but then I try, I would trust them to pull in the right people. Yeah. So if they build, right, if they, if they pull in the right people to do, to do this stuff, the professionals, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's not, but I don't want to just go hire. You can actually hire just the professional. Yeah. Right. We could do that. That will not work. And that's easy. I, yeah. I think that's an easy, that's probably easy to do. That's what I'm worried about. Yeah. We hire a professional and they have zero agile. It's not even the agile word. It's the passion I'm looking for. It's the yeah. connection to. I mean, well, it's a little bit of both because our content is not normal content. It's true. So you true. have to have some awareness of the stuff that matters and, and hear something and say, ooh, that's good. If you've not had to wrestle with the things that our listeners yeah. have had to listen with, it it's going to sound like the charlie brown teacher right like just making those noises and he's like well, okay i guess I'll we've pull also it. talked about snippeting yeah uh, like creating uh cutting the metacast up in some way for meaningful chunks like can yeah. we can we mine it for meaningful chunks because mm -hmm. they are long yeah and they are wordy well yeah and <laughs> so i've been told <laughs> exactly. You know, you don't. You, if I give you an opportunity, you take it normally. You know, yeah, why I'm, wouldn't you? Right? Yeah, yeah. So cutting things up. Uh, the other part of our con is shorter, better metacasters. Uh, so what? Mm. What is the sweet spot? Yeah. Our, our typical metacast is what thirty to forty-five minutes somewhere. The forty-five plus or minus five is it, to ten. Yeah. Is that really? Yeah, that's yeah. A, sort of a recipe that we repeat. We yeah. don't intentionally do it, but it, we sort of land in that space. Yeah. Uh, is that too long? So I'm not. I'm not trying to ask for like. I think our banter, that I think the the relationship we have works. Yes. Yeah. Right. So that I'm not op, you know putting out there for. I, we're going to maintain who we are, etc. Yeah. That seems to work pretty well. But cutting things into snippets, having bite sized chunks, uh, recording new bite sized chunks. You and I talked about videos, like intentionally bite sized. Yeah. Of like, hey, we're going to talk about something. We're going to limit it to like seven minutes. Yeah. And both of us. Which, yeah. <laughs> what did that word count look like? Josh gets like one word. He goes back to, welcome to the blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Thanks for joining. <laughs> it's, I'm laughing, but it's sadly true. Uh, uh, so we'd have to be careful. Yeah. Uh, so, so like. For instance, what I'm researching now is there are a few products out there that will reach into your podcast and attempt to partition it into chunks based on, I think, like natural breaks and it listens to different people talking. So what I'm looking at, because we do have some listeners that have said, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll help. Whatever you want, I can do. So I'm trying to find ways to get this tool for them to like log in. Listen to an episode and like extract a chunk and say like, "Hey, this is something good." Get it posted on Instagram or YouTube or wh whatever, wherever it needs to go. Getting that done, 
Um, so that's like going to happen. That's just going to like fall into place. So go like back we're to the expert there. or the, yeah. are you envisioning, I, I'm, I'm hearing like a producer. I'm going to call them a producer or something. Yeah. Right. An agile person, right. Passionate. They connect with us. They're a producer. And then even volunteers, I would, I say would connect to them. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking my job, like I've never contributed technically. Mm hmm. And I could try, but I'm not going to do it. So that might be counterproductive. So, so I'm a, I'm really a content guy. Yeah, and and you're well, and you've been both. You've been content. Well, well, in the end, what you and I realized is really what we're good at, what we're confident at, is creating the content. It, I have been able to get things in places exactly, and that's and it's like I'm I'm I've hit my head on the ceiling. Yeah, and I recognize that. So it's really. It's we just revert to content. Yeah. Uh, and vision. I would say vision, yeah. right? Like the higher level vision of avenues we'd like to pursue, but back to content. Uh, I've always been there. It would be a change for you. Mm-hmm. And then give that ball to someone. Mm-hmm. And to me, then it's their job to figure that out. Yeah. Right? If they need to pay someone to do something, a one shot or repetitiously, then pay it. I would also think that they could. They could go to volunteers, yeah, right, and leverage volunteers again to fill in their knowledge gaps. I mean, we have I mean, Josh yeah. in Texas is someone mm-hmm. who could connect the dots to someone if they had questions or gaps, and you know, on a couple episodes and say, "Do does it make sense to put these together?" Yeah, um, is that the same? So we are aligned on. We just need help on that side of things. Yeah, I, I've I've just learned about the complexities of content discovery. Yeah. And there are legitimate, real, necessary businesses that will help you ensure your content gets disco- is more likely to be discovered. Right. And that makes it worthwhile. Again, because you and I, we, we, we've talked about that we do this because we want to help. Yeah. And so – the more ears or eyeballs we Absolutely. get in front of, that's the driver for us. Um, will it generate money? Yes. It's clear that we haven't had a desire to generate money, uh, given that we've gone you know, 10, almost 12 years right. without, <laughs> without. Right. We have some Patreon supporters. Thank you to everybody that volunteered to do but that. But I think that's, that's part yeah. of, I mean, again, we're coming open. Yeah. I mean, I I think the the monetary aspects they matter. They yeah. matter for equipment. Uh, they matter for sources. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've been paying out a pot or whatever. I don't even know, but there's a balance. Like every every place where the podcast, you know, you have to buy something. Mm-hmm. Uh, so tools matter. Uh, paying for help matters. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think the monetization thing for growth. Yeah, it, I yeah. think our cheapness. It's a fuel. For yeah. the future, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. absolutely. I'm unapologetic about it. Are we going to make millions of dollars off the? I don't think so. Right, that's not our goal. Right, but uh, and the other the other cool thing we can do with the monetization. See, I think we've been lazy with monetization with the pay. We can we can give it away mm-hmm. if we if we get like like we can get contribute it. We've talked about Black Lives Matter. Yeah. I, I know that Nigerian uh, that girls training program we could yeah. we could we could put some money out there yeah. to help folks yeah uh, well and so the point is like yes we well Bob and I have talked about the let's see let's do some quick math here I and I know we've done this before this is this is a disappointing point but uh, so we have one hundred and eighty two episodes times 0.75 so we have 136 and a half hours of hours content. of content so let's divide that by 24 so we have five and a half days worth of content and we know there's good stuff in there but we feel like we're sort of wasting it, it absolutely you know it, so can can we find ways to get that to generate money so we can pay that professional so they can get the content in more places that then generates money to pay them more to get us more places to do all those things like that's the that's the ultimate goal here 
Well, I mean, back, but also for not forgetting the future. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's multifaceted. It's that. We have a historical repository. But where do we go in the future, Josh? Yeah. It's the video content. Yeah. Welcome to our Diversity and Inclusion Minutes. I'm Josh Anderson. I'm Bob Galen. All right. So today we're talking about not getting pickled yep. with ourselves, right? We did an episode yep. about that. Now it's like, hey, with the content that I create, we feel like some pickling happening. Yep. And last episode, we talked about diversity efforts and how we can allow ourselves to be pickled by the environment and allow the hashtag to stop trending. We stop paying attention. So we cannot allow to do that. This segment, which we have inserted into our last dozen or so episodes, will continue to be in every episode from here on out, uh, is again intended to drive that home to hit the pause button almost force our listeners to stop and think, Hey, what am I doing? Is there something I could, should be doing to make a difference? That's the intent here. In the meantime, Bob and I will talk about some things that we're doing. I have something. Oh, Bob. good. Yeah. Go, go for it. This is it. one of those where you're feeling. Cause I little, was coming up. I was yeah, coming up. Hey, could you read it in my I, face? I have been there, my friend. Yes. We come up and I'm like, Holy crap. What am I going to talk about? Uh, but again, that's been really helpful for us to keep it front of mind and make sure we're making a difference. So, One of the things, as I started to hire for product managers, um, I wanted to ensure that I had a diverse candidate pool, like almost insanely diverse. Um, And that didn't happen with the initial pass. And as I've been digging in, trying to look under and uncover why that happened, I can assure you, It was not because of lack of effort or lack of caring from our talent acquisition team because the leader of that group, he and I partner to lead the diversity and inclusion guild at our company. So we're both passionate about it and we're trying. And so what I started doing was reaching out to friends I have in the industry and saying like, hey, how are you generating a more diverse candidate pipeline? And people are posting jobs, people are doing things and trying, but it's not making a difference. So through a connection of a connection, there's a person I know that knows somebody that works at GitHub. That's like working on this same thing, trying to create slash solve this problem. And so we have a meeting later this week where we're going to talk about combining the efforts we have to actually make something that makes a difference. Um, So I'm, I don't know what that's going to turn into, but I know nothing bad can come out of passionate discussion by like-minded people. So I'm excited to see where that goes. Absolutely. I mean, on my side, it's it's nothing. It's just the I've continued to um, invite folks into the classes mm-hmm. and to contribute to that group in Nigeria mm-hmm. a bit. So um, so that's continued. Uh, so it's, it's to me, it's ongoing. Mm-hmm. Uh, if there's a, one other comment, it's maybe, you know, ideas from the Metacasters. If there's anything I can do to help or point people at me. So if you know someone who would benefit from a class or from coaching or mm-hmm. whatnot, uh, don't be shy about pointing them at me. Mm-hmm. Um, if someone can't afford, uh, I did teach a certified agile leadership class. And if you know someone or if you are listening and you can't pay for it for whatever reason Mm -hmm. and you fall into diversity or, even you know, and and that would include being out of work, et cetera, don't be shy about reaching out. So I guess that's my my plea in the middle here is I I don't I'm not getting enough inquiries. Right. I'm not getting enough questions. Right. And uh, so pass it around. Okay, Want to get back to the episode? Let's do it. All right. One of the things we were talking about, and and I, Josh, so I'm, I think part of the communication that you all miss is the activity between Josh and I. I, I think I remember in one Metacast, you you said to people, we do when we do shake and bake, we literally bump fists. <laughs> yeah, but you can't see that, and right. you don't know that, and you told folks, but mm-hmm. you told folks relatively recently we do that. Um, Metacasters, I mean, Josh's facial expressions sometimes are priceless in his reactions <laughs> to some of the stupid things I say, and vice versa. So all you're, all we've been getting is the verbal, right, and mm-hmm. some tone, but we haven't been getting the body language and right. stuff. 
Um, and the activity, there's some cases where, you know, we'll be talking about something and I'll be like waving my hands or, I mean, so it's a really important topic Yeah, and you may miss that. So I, I think in the future, it's like visual Bob and Josh, you've never seen us. Right. Now that may be a blessing in disguise, but there's value. We, we perceive that there might be value yeah. in how we communicate by just seeing us. Uh, and the digestible chunks is part of that. We'll have long sessions. We'll mm-hmm. have short sessions. We'll have uh, we can slice up the, me- the the historical recordings. I'm a, I'm more excited. I think I think the slicing up old stuff is interesting mm-hmm. and and solid. I'm more I'm excited about the future, yeah. like video Josh and Bob, right? Yeah, and how people react to that. Uh, short the snippets. Yeah. How many hits we get? Did it really help people? Mm-hmm. The comments we get. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when we put out a call for, you know, co- uh, questions, uh, sometimes we get them, sometimes we don't. But if that increases. Yeah. So have the listeners guide our content. Yeah. Right? Like, you I, and I pull this I, out I, yeah. of our butts sometimes. Yeah. But, and it's it's good. But what what if the vision of the future would be we're not even selecting anymore? Based mm-hmm. on our increasing listenership, like we talk about, we're helping people on demand Mm -hmm. i love the idea that yeah yeah the number of times that we post and this will be an interesting one that we post slash ask a question either in the show notes or in the show itself that we actually get responses is relatively low very low yeah i mean there's occasional and and usually when people get us they're they're sort of regular listeners yeah right, right yeah yeah uh they're they're regulars or people that we know right so current, like if we had to push play today and we had all of the stuff because I was scurrying over the weekend to get some things set up here in my office at home to turn this into a video version. Cause I'm again, I'm messing with a bunch of tools to try and figure that out. Um, and our lighting is not good. So I'm going to solve that problem. Uh, but current plan is I, we think the podcast just remains the podcast like that keeps doing its thing. We likely mine for bits and pieces to pull out and extract and get places. So there's but, nuggeting that. Yeah. There's uh, turning it into text. <laughs> nuggeting. Nuggeting is <laughs> a <laughs> verb. <laughs> that, 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 that did. <laughs> it's true. I, yeah. I knew what you meant, but it's still I know. Funny. It's a yeah. silly. Yeah. 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 Uh, but what was I saying? Uh, I'm, I'm also – like uh text mm-hmm. uh converting well, yeah it to that, text. yeah you're you're a text guy no no don't just pick on me about that there are folks out there that struggle i am not picking on you the difference between you and i yeah is your comfort and confidence with a written word and your capability to just like churn it out and go ahead is, and say it is at a different level than mine yeah yeah it, but you were going to go for age too no 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 no, no. it um, is I think a key difference between you and I is you have this comfort zone with right, right? like you've written books, yeah, multiple. Yeah. You write blogs yeah. all the time. You were pushing on me no, to no, you're, you're right to create blogs, and I I did, but it but it's not a natural thing for me. Then I started Twitch and doing that, and that became natural and comfortable for me. Where you're very I very smooth on that, you know that. It, it is. It, it comes off. I see. I could not twitch. I I, I, mean, think, I could twitch, but I could not twitch. I think you could with the amount of practice I had. I did it for a year and a half, at least once a week. So I had eighty swings at it. Really? Yeah. It's just. A, it's just a weird because it's real time. Yeah. Right. It's, yeah. it's a real. It's a, it's a, it's like a camera on your shoulder. Yeah. Like as I was writing, you right. know, it's just, it just, for me, it feels very but awkward. It, right. Which writing for me, like, I think I could be good at it, but it's not a happy place for me. It feels forced. Whereas when I started the Twitch channel, that became comfortable for me. And, oh, hey, if I want to discuss something, I'm comfortable with a micro, with a microphone and a camera more than you are. Whereas with the written word, you're more comfortable than I am. Right. I mean, I, I, I'm coming. I want to amplify for the Metacasters, too, and get feedback. The content we have, like you have the Twitch streams, mm-hmm. right? And you may have recorded them or what, and you continue that. And that's what we've 
what we've part of the vision to me and what we've not done. I've written, we've talked about this. I've written, I don't know how many blog posts. Oh yeah. Right. I, I've written like in the last 10, it, it's almost as long or if not longer, it is longer than the Metacast. Yeah, time. definitely. Definitely. And I, I have hundreds of uh, things that I've written, probably five, six, seven hundred mm-hmm. or something. Word counts mm-hmm. because I'm wordy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Never noticed. It's like hundreds of thousands of words and things. And we've, and we've rarely like, Ten times I've said, oh, I blogged about that. We'll put a link in the Metacast, and, and there's no link in the Metacast. Right, and then there's times where you send the link. I forget to put it in when I edited a couple of days ago, or you send me the link. I already published it, Yeah, or something in the middle. We have this rich, yeah. so it's it's like take this rich view going forward mm-hmm. and just keep connecting the dots. I think folks could connect the dots. I mean, whoever this unicorn is that we get or yeah. like, the, whatever we call them, that for a person who's helping, I mean, for a year, there's content out there that they could be mining. It's not just, it's the Metacast, it's mm-hmm. the podcast, it's the, it's, it's uh, we've got recordings out there mm-hmm. uh, from conferences that we've done mm-hmm. and just put all of this stuff together and then start integrating it. I think it would have sort of like, that's where the monetization comes in. Mm-hmm. It's not charging for the Metacast. It's this aggregation opportunity that's out there. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff, yep. and there's no cohesion to it. No, there's a, no, no. But I mean, like, there, like my blogs are really hard to find. Yeah. So searching them, it, it's not, it's not easy to find them. So that's a, that's a part of it as well. Yeah. So adding, so making it easy to navigate all of that stuff, and then as we continue to sort of go forward, mm-hmm. that I mean, that's that creates a rich, yeah, like. A rich repository Whoa. into the minds of Bob and Josh. Wow. Yes. I feel like that's a good like Leonard Nimoy narration, like as an intro to Star Trek. It would be. <laughs> okay, so so Nanu, things Nanu. Th- oh. <laughs> Is that Mork and Mindy? That was yeah. Okay, that was okay, okay. and that was an experiment to see what would happen <laughs> with you. See, at Metacasters, let me give you the play by play. His little head went into his little hand. <laughs> Actually, he rolled his eyes first. This was a big roll. Yeah. And then it's like the sigh. Oh. And then it's like, what the hell is that? What, <laughs> what have I signed up for? <laughs> see, you missed all the... See, yeah. we, they would not miss yeah. that. Yeah, so current thought is all of that stuff with historical content that Bob mentioned, continuing to do the Metacast in its current form. It works. We're comfortable. People like it. We have thoughts and ideas of how we can drive listenership with that, with additional expertise that we don't have. The other thing that we've been pretty consistent about is upping our video creation game. Absolutely. And we currently believe that the answer to that is shorter snippets of like, hey, here's a here's a 10, 12, whatever the right number is. Like, here's a, here's a topic. We're going to talk about it. And then you're out. And very balanced. You know, I we joke about it a lot. Mm-hmm. But you don't... I think our better Metacast is when... It's not word count, mm-hmm. but when we are balanced in ideas yeah. and stuff, right? And I, I, I literally think in the videos, we want to force ourselves. There's an intro. Mm-hmm. There's a topic. Josh gets five minutes. I get five minutes. And then we do... Or something. It's not the five. But there's a balanced... Because there's, there's value. I think sometimes... You, like you don't get the value that you have your mm-hmm. ideas you're i overwhelm that i try i know I you try. do no. i know no but, but the rest but that would be the nugget right that's, well that's the recipe that we have that you get you hear from both sides or whatever whatever that means right but what um what i know is i know you're bob galen like i it, so just accept that, right? You're going to get embarrassed. But like, there are people that I've hired of like, oh, you do that podcast with Bob Galen? Bob is the reason why I'm a product, whatever. Like, I read his book. And so that's the, so I recognize that on the marquee, Bob Galen's name is first. Right. And I am 100% comfortable with that. And I 100% accept that that has helped me throughout my career. Right. And I, and that's cool. And I am more than happy and more than comfortable to let you roll because. But but again, but in the Metacast, we do that. What I'm saying is, I think 
So we've talked about thinking out of the box. Yeah. So I think there's some style things that are different. Mm-hmm. If we're doing the Metacast, yes. Yeah. Let's just say that. That's yeah. part of our recipe for that. But if we're trying to do like balanced video sessions, mm-hmm. more learning content, yeah. like call it the learning nugget of the day or something mm-hmm. like that, then then I think balance, it, it's going to be better. It's It's going to be less valuable if I ramble. It's not just word count. Yeah. I, I ramble. I'm a, I'm so, and you bring me back to earth. <laughs> I, I and that happens a lot. Yeah. And so let's let's balance that out. I'm with, right? So yeah. that becomes a new re, so a new recipe. We mm-hmm. we create a new recipe. Uh some content I want you to lead. Generational mm-hmm. content. We talk, you know, like approaching different generations. Mm-hmm. You have skills in that space. Product content, you're developing that. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I think rebalancing our recipe, let's not fall into, let's not be pickled by the recipe yeah. when we start looking for these at the, these new avenues is what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. Agree. So that that's what, that's where our head is at right now. Um, I'm why, at a... Why are we sharing this on the medical? This is like a, this is like a behind the, the scenes, you know, the two co, co-founders... Like exploring where we're going. Yeah. Well, I, I kind of like it because I feel like we're putting our money where our mouth is by we spent almost an hour last episode pleading, encouraging people to look at the situation they're in and see like, hey, are you unbeknownst to you being pickled? And you likely are. If if you're not actively trying to prevent it, you likely are. And I re- and again, you and I have been talking about talking about this for a while, but yeah. then it hit me like, wait a minute, like we got here because we realized we were being pickled and we we're like, we can't allow that. Well, I think there were two things that were happening here. The pickling is a big part of it. Mm-hmm. And then we've talked about it. You talked, it's, um, jo- Josh became the single source owner and his whip limit got affected. I mean, I think part yeah, of it, right, yeah, which is a good agile tenant as well, mm-hmm. is like the self recognition that you can't do it anymore. Yeah. And we have to ask for help. Yeah. Right? We we have to get help no matter what. We, yeah. And and I think those two things have happened to us mm-hmm. over time. And that's a nod to you cuz it's easy to it's easy to schlug it's it's not easy but it's it's easy to not change that, right? Yeah, right. And oh okay, I I'm I'm the editor of the podcast or something like that. So I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Being self aware of that, oh, self aware. That's for sure. <laughs> no, it's true. Yeah. What's our vision? Maybe we can wrap this in it. Well, I, I if we I, were to have like a big bang vision to articulate for the Metacasters, what would it be? I would like to become the content source for all things work related. So not agile. So are you? being more general. Yeah. So a, as I've been researching this and I look at this week in technology, which is like a classic early original podcast. Yep. Leo Laporte, I think is the guy. Yep. We've probably all listened to it at what, whether you knew you were listening to it or not. And what that has become is it has become, they, they have, um, I don't know if absorbed, acquired, partnered with, I don't know what they have dozens of shows that cover dozens of topics across the technology spectrum. Okay. So, uh, yes, I 100% with the Agile Podcast Network, we we could quickly grow this to Agile. But and you hey, want to be here's more all the purpose. things. But I do think you and I sometimes don't talk about Agile stuff at all. I, it's, I agree. It's more leadership. It's what it's how do you get high, right? We go the full spectrum. So right. I think there's an opportunity to go the full, like, Hey, if you need high quality work based, like business growth content, we are the source I like for where that. You're going. We haven't talked about that. That's, we sort of danced around that, yeah. but I like that vision of it. Uh, you wanted to say the full, would you say it? The full Monty. I didn't want to say that. I know. <laughs> I didn't. You said I wanted to say that. I, no, no, that thought never came into my brain. It never. No. no it no. No. You know, I never saw that movie. I ne- I haven't either. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I just know the expression. Yeah. I'm trying to think of my vision, and I, 
it's not any I'd like to yes and so I'm not it's not I I love what you said mm-hmm. um, I think for me a part of the vision I want to amplify I want to amplify the contributions back to things like diversity mm-hmm if we can do it at all, I'm already doing it. So just really continuing our diversity focus, mm-hmm. uh, which is a yes and to that. And then I want to, I want to be, I want to be a badass. Ooh, whoa! So I, I want to weave in, like, like in the universe mm-hmm. when you think of badass content providers mm-hmm. in our space, right? Or when you think of content providers, you think of you know Josh Anderson and Bob Galen. Mm-hmm. What a pair of badasses. Mm-hmm. I, I want folks to sort of go to badass. And I know we have the badass coach in our yeah. in our network and mm-hmm. stuff. But I wanna I wanna grab that and and I just want us because I think we are badasses mm-hmm. and I think folks will recognize that. Right. There's I mean, we have a there's a you have a wonderful depth and breadth. Entrepreneurial mm-hmm. startups, you you still co- you were coding not that long ago. I mean, mm-hmm. there's a depth and breadth to us, and when you put us together, mm-hmm. that's a, that's a pretty badass freaking cloud. Yeah. So could I add those two things? That's give back. So we're it's not just about chinging at the bank. It's putting our money where our mouth is with our causes that matter. Continuing that. Yeah. And then I want I want people to maybe our vision you know how do we measure it how many badass emails do we get per Ooh, per month wow like you guys are freaking badasses like like and right now we've got zero yeah. <laughs> do you, can you align with that yeah yeah I think that's great okay okay are we done with this well, episode we're done with discussing this we're yeah, done like, with making for, this happen no 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 yeah. we have to yeah I, I don't know if we're gonna make you know make everything maybe yeah, i don't think we report out so this well was, i this so was a behind I, the kimono I, right? I uh i disagree with you bob oh i think one of the things that i have really valued over the years is when people have documented the journey so i think there's something we could do i don't know if this is oh. the right delivery mechanism if oh, the I'm podcast is right or if it's video or whatever i think I I have always appreciated that behind the scenes look. So check of, in a little yeah, bit. Check uh, in every yeah, once in a while, right? Of like, hey, uh, this is where we're going. This is what's going I'm on. This is what's for, yeah. I'm up for that. Yeah. So we, what do they call accountability partners? So the metacasters are our accountability mm-hmm. partners to some degree. So let's have some. Let's yeah. decide. I'm, yeah. I'm up for that. Okay. So from beautiful downtown, hey Metacasters, I'm in I'm in Fuquay today. <laughs> so from beautiful downtown Fuquay, uh, North Carolina, Verena. I'm sorry. Yeah, get let me right. do that again. Fuquay, Verena. I'm Bob Gale, and I'm Josh Anderson. Shake and bake. Take care, y'all.